In the profound teachings of Nichiren Daishonin, the simple phrase, thus I heard, carries immense significance, unlocking the very essence of the Buddha's teachings as expounded in the Lotus Sutra. This phrase, uttered at the beginning of many Buddhist sutras, serves as a potent affirmation of the authenticity and authority of the teachings that follow. As Nichiren elucidates, the word, thus, of, thus I heard, indicates the essence of a doctrine heard from the Buddha. This statement underscores the profound reverence accorded to the Buddha's words, which are perceived as eternal truths transcending the boundaries of time and space. Nichiren draws upon the writings of esteemed scholars, such as the passages from the Hak Mangu and Hak Mangu Ki, to further illuminate the profound significance of the word, thus. He cites, if, thus, does not indicate the teaching which surpasses the eight categories, then how can it be the teaching of the Lotus Sutra? This assertion establishes a clear distinction between the provisional teachings expounded in other sutras and the ultimate truth embodied within the Lotus Sutra. In Nichiren's profound vision, the titles of the various sutras serve as encapsulations of their respective teachings. He writes, the essence of each sutra is contained in its title. This sentiment echoes the wisdom of Nichiren's predecessors, such as the revered Tian Te, who perceived the title of the Lotus Sutra as conveying the profound meaning of the sutra as a whole. Nichiren employs vivid analogies to illustrate the profound truth contained within the titles of the sutras. He likens the encompassing nature of a sutra's title to the way all things that exist on the four continents of the world are clearly reflected on the face of the moon without exception. This poetic imagery invites us to perceive the titles as portals, granting access to the boundless wisdom encapsulated within each sutra. As Nichiren explores the teachings of other sutras, he acknowledges their profound truths while simultaneously asserting the supreme status of the Lotus Sutra. He states, those who listen to the titles of such provisional sutras are unable to realize the teachings of the mutual possession of the Ten Worlds, the Hundred Worlds and Thousand Factors, or the Three Thousand Realms, which contain the benefit of supreme enlightenment. This sentiment underscores Nichiren's belief in the Lotus Sutra as the pinnacle of the Buddha's teachings, a truth that transcends the partial wisdom expounded in other sutras. Nichiren further reinforces this conviction by declaring that even the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas depicted in these provisional sutras cannot equal common mortals of Myoji Soku who have just embraced the Lotus Sutra. Throughout his writings, Nichiren employs striking metaphors and analogies to illuminate the profound significance of embracing the Lotus Sutra, even in its most rudimentary form, the chanting of its title. He compares the act of chanting, Myoho Renge Kyo, to a crown prince who, despite his tender age and lack of conscious understanding, is destined to reign over an empire. Nichiren asserts, those who chant Myoho Renge Kyo, the title of the Lotus Sutra, even without understanding its meaning, realize not only the heart of the Lotus Sutra but also the essence of all the Buddha's teachings. This bold declaration invites us to perceive the profound wisdom and transformative power inherent within the mere utterance of the sutra's title. Moreover, Nichiren's teachings underscore the profound responsibility that accompanies the propagation of the Lotus Sutra's teachings. He acknowledges the historical reality that, for over two millennia since the Buddha's passing, no one has spread it during the more than 2,220 years. Nichiren perceives his own role as a potent catalyst for the dissemination of this ultimate truth, despite the initial skepticism and opposition he faced. In a poignant passage, Nichiren likens the disbelief he encountered to the hypothetical scenario of a lowly soldier, claiming to have seduced a renowned beauty like Wang Chao Chun. This analogy serves to underscore the profound incredulity that greeted Nichiren's assertion of his profound insights into the Lotus Sutra's teachings. Yet, Nichiren's unwavering conviction in the truth of his revelations remains unshaken. He draws upon the wisdom of nature, citing the examples of the humble crow and the snake, whose innate abilities surpass those of mightier creatures. This analogy invites us to perceive the profound truth that can emerge from the most unexpected sources, transcending the limitations of societal rank or status. 
Nichiren's teachings remind us that the embrace of the Lotus Sutra's teachings is not contingent upon external validation or societal acceptance. He admonishes, if one holds me, Nichiren, in contempt and does not chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, he is like a baby who doubts its mother's milk and refuses the breast, or a patient who is suspicious of his doctor and rejects the medicine prescribed for him. These powerful words underscore the profound trust and conviction required to fully embrace the transformative power of the Lotus Sutra's teachings, even in the face of skepticism or opposition from others. As one delves deeper into Nichiren's insights, it becomes evident that the chanting of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is not a mere recitation of syllables, but rather a profound affirmation of the very entity and heart of the Lotus Sutra itself. Nichiren asserts, Myoho Renge Kyo is neither the scriptural text nor its meaning but the heart of the entire sutra. This profound assertion invites us to perceive the act of chanting the sutra's title as a direct embodiment of its ultimate truth, transcending the limitations of intellectual comprehension or scriptural study alone. Throughout his teachings, Nichiren's exhortations resonate with a profound sense of urgency and conviction. He admonishes his followers, if you faith is firm, then you should single-mindedly resolve. I maintain faith not for the sake of other people but for the benefit of my deceased father. These words underscore the profound personal commitment and resolve required to truly embrace the Lotus Sutra's teachings, transcending societal pressures or the allure of worldly comforts. Nichiren's teachings also offer guidance on navigating the inevitable opposition and skepticism that arise from those who have yet to embrace the profound truth of the Lotus Sutra. He advises his followers to respond with a firm yet composed demeanor, stating, Say to him sardonically, I deeply appreciate your warning. However, you should save your admonishment for yourself. This counsel invites us to meet such challenges with a steadfast conviction rooted in the wisdom of the Dharma, while simultaneously extending compassion towards those who have yet to awaken to its profound truths. As we contemplate the depth and breadth of Nichiren's insights, it becomes evident that the simple phrase, thus I heard, encapsulates a profound reverence for the Buddha's teachings and a steadfast commitment to their propagation. Nichiren's exhortations invite us to perceive the chanting of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, not merely as a ritualistic act, but as a direct embodiment of the Lotus Sutra's ultimate truth. In the words of Nichiren himself, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is not only the heart of all the Buddha's teachings but also the heart, entity and essence of the Lotus Sutra. This profound assertion serves as a clarion call, inviting us to embrace the transformative power of the Lotus Sutra's teachings with unwavering conviction, transcending the limitations of our own perceptions and societal norms. As we embark on this journey of spiritual awakening, Nichiren's teachings offer a roadmap for navigating the inevitable challenges and opposition that arise. They remind us that true enlightenment often emerges from the crucible of adversity, forged through an unwavering commitment to the Dharma and a profound reverence for the Buddha's teachings. Ultimately, Nichiren's insights into the profound significance of, thus I heard, invite us to perceive the Lotus Sutra not merely as a collection of words or teachings, but rather as a living embodiment of the Buddha's wisdom, accessible to all who embrace its essence with an open heart and a steadfast resolve. As one delves deeper into Nichiren's teachings on the significance of, thus I heard, it becomes evident that this simple phrase encapsulates a profound reverence for the lineage of wisdom that has preserved and propagated the Buddha's teachings throughout the ages. Nichiren's insights invite us to perceive ourselves as integral links in this unbroken chain, tasked with the solemn responsibility of upholding and disseminating the Dharma. Nichiren draws upon the wisdom of esteemed Buddhist scholars and patriarchs who preceded him, such as Ananda, Manju, and Kangasada, revered disciples of the Buddha who played pivotal roles in compiling and preserving his teachings. Nichiren asserts that these luminaries, first stated the title of a sutra and then, thus I heard, thereby affirming the authenticity and authority of the teachings they had received directly from the Buddha himself. This reverence for the unbroken lineage of wisdom is further reinforced by Nichiren's assertion that the act of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is not merely a recitation, but rather a profound affirmation of the ultimate truth embodied within the Lotus Sutra. 
He declares, those who chant Myoho Renge Kyo, the title of the Lotus Sutra, even without understanding its meaning, realize not only the heart of the Lotus Sutra but also the essence of all the Buddha's teachings. This bold statement invites us to perceive the chanting of the sutra's title as a direct embodiment of the profound wisdom that has been preserved and transmitted through countless generations of Buddhist practitioners and scholars. In essence, by uttering, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, we become living vessels, carrying forth the eternal truths expounded by the Buddha himself. Moreover, Nichiren's teachings underscore the profound responsibility that accompanies this sacred task. He acknowledges the historical reality that, for over two millennia, the essence of the Lotus Sutra's teachings had remained largely obscured, with even esteemed figures like Tian Te and Dengyo failing to fully propagate its ultimate truth. Nichiren perceives his own role as a catalyst for the dissemination of this profound wisdom, declaring, although I may not be worthy of this teaching, I expound it because the time is right. This sentiment underscores Nichiren's profound humility and his recognition that he is merely a vessel through which the eternal truths of the Dharma are once again brought to light. Throughout his writings, Nichiren's exhortations resonate with a profound sense of urgency and conviction, inviting his followers to embrace their role as torchbearers of the Lotus Sutra's teachings. He admonishes, if your faith is firm, then you should single-mindedly resolve. I maintain faith not for the sake of other people but for the benefit of my deceased father. These words underscore the profound personal commitment required to truly uphold the Dharma, transcending societal pressures or the allure of worldly comforts. Nichiren's teachings remind us that the propagation of the Buddha's teachings is not a mere intellectual pursuit, but rather a sacred duty imbued with profound karmic significance, carrying the potential to liberate countless beings from the cycles of suffering. As one contemplates the depth and breadth of Nichiren's insights, it becomes evident that the simple phrase, thus I heard, carries profound implications that reverberate across the ages. It serves as a potent affirmation of the unbroken lineage of wisdom that has preserved and propagated the Buddha's teachings, a lineage that we, as contemporary practitioners, are called upon to uphold and carry forth. In the face of inevitable skepticism and opposition, Nichiren's teachings offer a wellspring of guidance and inspiration. He exhorts his followers to meet such challenges with a steadfast conviction rooted in the wisdom of the Dharma, while simultaneously extending compassion towards those who have yet to awaken to its profound truths. Nichiren's words resonate with a clarion call, inviting us to perceive ourselves not merely as passive recipients of the Buddha's teachings, but rather as active participants in their dissemination and preservation. By embracing the essence of, thus I heard, we become living embodiments of the Dharma, tasked with the sacred responsibility of ensuring that the eternal truths expounded by the Buddha continue to resonate throughout the ages, guiding countless beings towards the path of enlightenment. As contemporary practitioners, we are invited to honor the profound lineage of wisdom that has preceded us by embodying the unwavering spirit of Nichiren himself, a spirit imbued with profound reverence, steadfast conviction, and an unwavering dedication to upholding the ultimate truth of the Lotus Sutra's teachings. In doing so, we become integral links in the unbroken chain of the Dharma, ensuring that the profound wisdom encapsulated in the simple phrase, thus I heard, continues to reverberate throughout the ages, guiding beings towards the boundless potential of enlightenment.